through this war-torn country in just a moment. But also tonight, an extraordinary mission with Afghanistan's flying doctors. A dramatic insight into the work of the American army medics who chopper into the front line to save lives. No, no morphine, just two tourniquets. He was a little confused. His uh, level of conscience was, was decreasing a little bit. He was still in that state of shock. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the invasion of Afghanistan. Operation Enduring Freedom was meant to drive the Taliban out of here for good. But recently, they've been just as deadly as ever. Their killing of high-profile Afghans has rocked the nation and shattered the policy of talking with the Taliban. We've been here long enough to see firsthand what that means. Afghans are pitted against each other. And I've met many who now want to wage war on Pakistan for harboring the suicide bombers. I've come to Kabul to meet a man seeking peace. But he's killed by a suicide bomber just hours before I reach him. Former Afghan President Brahmadin Rabani had been negotiating an end to fighting with the Taliban. His assassination is a major blow to any hope of an end to the violence here. اینها از اسلام یک وسیله ساختن و میخوان از این طریق اهداف شوم خود را برآورده بسازند و اسلام را یک وحش چیزی وحشت در تمام دنیا معرفی میکنند MPs and former warlords come to pay their last respects to Rabani but no one feels safe in the open here crowds like this are prime targets for another bombing A provincial governor arrives, and there's confrontation over whether his convoy will be allowed in the driveway. All the guards are armed, and elders fear there could be a shootout. It wouldn't be the first time. At Rabani's funeral, a 21-gun salute triggers panic. It's okay. Easy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a sign of how edgy Kabul is these days. Security is quite tight. As you can see, they've really ramped it up. This mainly is the president's uh, security guards. But you must wonder, where was all this security when Rabani was killed by suicide bombers two days ago? I'm struck by the anger amongst ordinary people here towards neighboring Pakistan, blamed by so many for harboring Rabani's killers. فقط آی اس آی پاکستان است نسل در نسل ما را اجازه نمیدهد که افغانستان ما یک افغانستان واحد متحد استقلالش به دست خودش باشه ما انتقام خود از پاکستان میگیریم نه از برادر خود was a key figure in the Northern Alliance a coalition of fighters opposed to the Taliban His burial today takes place under the gaze of the alliance's former leader, Ahmad Shah Massoud. Massoud was also assassinated. An al-Qaeda suicide bomber killed him just two days before the 9-11 attacks. I was born here, but left when I was too young to comprehend a country descending into chaos. 
Now I want to understand how this land has become so violent. I visit one of Afghanistan's most notorious prisons, Polichalchi, to speak to a Taliban killer. It's rare for the media to gain access, and we're told not to film as we enter. Inside, I meet Pakistani national and member of the Taliban, Kari Ramazan. Three years ago, he walked into one of Kabul's biggest hotels, the Serena, where the Australian embassy used to be. He shot dead six civilians there. Ramazan would have killed even more if the suicide vest he was wearing hadn't failed to detonate. So what went through your mind when you thought you were going to die? Could you tell me where exactly in the Quran it says to commit suicide? But if you could just give me the verse that says kill yourself. Even though he is in jail for murder, he would rather face the brutal justice system of the Taliban. Do you think you'll be able to oust America and NATO from Afghanistan? They attempted to negotiate and they killed the peace leader. What right do Pakistanis have to come and fight an Afghan war? Pakistan, the American and the NATO. And then his extraordinary view on the place of women in society. Back to his cell, to a life of indefinite confinement. These girls know all too well where they stand in the world of the Taliban. (laughs) 
In October last year, Taliban fighters tried to murder these students by gassing the school, punishment for the crime of female seeking an education. The girls were afraid, but determined to continue their studies. So they marched back into their classes the very next day. But not everyone is privileged enough to go to school. Ajmal, now 10 years old, was born the same year the US invaded to drive out the Taliban. I wanted to find out more about his life as a beggar. He tells me he earns approximately two dollars a day. Fear everywhere, in a place where war has maimed so many. This battered shipping container was once Koko Muhammad's livelihood, a shop which sold spare parts for cars. Now it's been bulldozed by government workers who want to clean up the area. Back at his house, Koko Muhammad struggles up the stairs. He says he was injured when a rocket exploded next to him, killing three neighbours during Afghanistan's civil war. These are the papers, Koko Muhammad says, prove he has been the owner of his spare parts business for 40 years. Without a shop or any other form of income, Koko Muhammad and his family are barely surviving. To them, life under the Taliban can only be better than what they have now. Koko Muhammad echoes the words of the suicide bomber, Kari Ramazan who told me that under the Taliban regime, criminals would pay the ultimate price. Koko Muhammad 
باید خیانت شدیده در یک جای دار غرغره داشته باشه خیانت کنه غرغرهش کنه که دگاه عبرت بگره که اگر نکنه خونه پس رو که بگره شو سبا شو پس الا بوده باز رو از او بطر نیست It's a sentiment I heard more than once. A hard line longing for law and order. But now, any solution to the country's woes may be beyond reach. Talking to the Taliban seemed like a way out of Afghanistan's mess. But if that policy is now dead in the water, you have to wonder where Afghanistan's embattled leaders can turn next. After the break, I'll be back with more of my special report. Welcome back to this special edition of Dateline, coming to you from Afghanistan. I came back to the country this time, looking to find some hope for the future. But so far, all I've seen is more instability and chaos. And now, to part two of our story about this tense and divided nation. In the city of Mazar-e-Sharif, 350 kilometers north of Kabul, the 15th century Blue Mosque is a magnificent reminder of ancient Afghanistan. After the mayhem of Kabul, Mazar is a peaceful, well-run city. An example of what Afghanistan could be. But 20 kilometers outside the city is this fort called Kalai Jangi, which has an infamous place in the nation's recent history. In their fight against the Taliban, the Northern Alliance used this 19th century fortress as a jail. But in November of 2001, the overcrowded inmates rioted. It was here that Taliban prisoners took control of the fort and the Northern Alliance and their US allies moved quickly to take it back. But things didn't go according to plan. After a week of heavy fighting to quell the uprising, the US dropped one of their heavy bombs on the fort, the JDAM. But when it fell a fraction off target, its indiscriminate destruction left a grim toll on both sides. Mohammed Atanur played a key role in ousting the Taliban. He's now governor of the Balkh province and one of the most powerful men in the country. The assassinated former president Rabani was a Northern Alliance friend and mentor. یعنی قتل و شهادت رهبر از خط قرمز هم گذشت از خط سرخ هم گذشت حالا شما میگین که چه امکان نداره که شما یک پیس پروسس با طالبا شروع میکنین آیا راست است خب کسانی که بخواد از به صلح اهمیت قائل باشه ارزش قائل باشه صلح را درک بکنه احترام داشته باشه به صلح او طالب است هر کسی که از ما او را حمایت بکنه اما کسی که با سال اصلا واجه, واجه و کلمه سال دوست نداره با سال اصلا آشنایی نداره سال به نام یک چیزی خوب برای یک جامعه نیازمندی وزارت یک جامعه نمیشناسه با اونو سال چی معنی داره ما سال بگوییم و اون ما را گردن میزنه ما سال بگوییم اون تفاق کده که اطفالی ما را بکشه It's the responsibility of General Esmatullah Alize to secure the city and the province against the Taliban We go on patrol with his heavily armed forces. They stop and search, looking for everything, from an arms cache to traffic offenders. The city seems safe, but we've heard the Taliban have control of towns not far from here. وطن از پس سی سال میشه که جنگ جریان داره از بقای جنگ سلاحا در هر خانه و در هر قریه هستن 
با استفاده از مصالحه دستاشته ایشان که هنوز نه به دایاک و نه به دی دی آر تسلیم کردن بعضی اوقات ولگردی و چپاولگری و دوزدی و رازنی میکنه که یک زمینه زمینه سازی برای آمدن طالب باشه However, General Alize denies the enemy is creeping up. چون مرکزی تعلیم و تربیه طالب اکمال سلا و اکمال خودشان از اوست طرف سرحد می شود. بخاطر از ایک تایی سرحد می رسد تبایی سکی را بسیار دور است اکمالات شان سخت است. خود از ضعیف. But the governor, General Mohammed Atanur's concerns range wider than his own province. He wants Hamid Karzai to stop dealing with the Taliban. من برای رهبری دولت به تماس هستم و از شخص رئیس جمهور و معاونین محترمشان تقاضا کردم که در سیستم برای پالیسی امنیتی و اطلاعاتی و این کشفی خود باید اینا تغییرات امده باید بیارن. تاکید معمی است که دیگه برای دشمنا باید موقع داده نشه که ما را پیهم بکشن اگر دولت در کابل خاموش باشه شما چی میکنین؟ اگر دولت ما را جواب بده که پالیسی را تغییر نمیتیم توانایی امنیت هم نداریم و دیگه هر کس میتونه جان خود حفاظت بکنه که در حیطه صلاحیت و ظرفیت دولت نبوده باشه ما وقت به مردم مراجع میکنیم و به مجایدین مراجع میکنیم the governor's threat to rearm and regroup his former fighters presents a dilemma for Karzai's government. یا دیگران دکتر سبا عبدالله و دیگران این پاپ شری داشته باشن که ما باید همیشه آباد و آباد جنگ کنیم مردم افغانستان این ای ایدیا را سپورت نمی کنن از جنگ خسته هستن سی ده هست که جنگ است جنگ The Karzai government is in contact with Wakil Ahmed Mutawakil the Taliban's former foreign minister He's a valuable go between but in a city under siege by his former masters his life here is in danger, and he's offered protection by the Karzai government. Who are they? Um, I mean, is there a good Taliban and a bad Taliban? Who, who is today's Taliban? Taliban is a very important part of the government. او هغه سټرکچر په دې کښې نه چې هغوی خپل یونیټي ساتلې ده تر اوسه پورې یو سپوکسمین یو بیرغ یو مشر سو اف سمون ور ټو سټیل د هاند وود بی چوپت او بیا محاکم موجود وي چې هغه په عدالت باندې یو محکمه دو محکمه درې محکمه من حیث اصل ټول هغه اسلامي قوانین چې په یو شرعي نظام کې باید د تطبیق وړ دي با کسان که میاین بام میمانان یا با کی صحبت کنن حکومت و خارجه هم میرن بمبار دارن مردم هم میکشن این هم میین انفجار میکنن چون جنگ است تا هنوز به حدی نرسیده تا هنوز سر یک ایجندای مشخص توافق نشده اینا پیس پیس به پیس مذاکرات صورت نگرفتن یعنی فکر میکنین که اول سل شاید بیای بعد از اینکه آقای ربانی مطمئن است as I prepare to leave Afghanistan, I find one last extraordinary piece in this complex political puzzle. Homos Sultani is a member of the Afghan parliament. She's made the startling claim that none other than the leader of the Taliban, Mullah Omar, has recently stayed at her house in Kabul. On a Marbeka, Azuko Chipoino Mada, Imzada. بسیار سنت داده که مسئله همه غیم امو سنت در سرش یک دفعه غور بکنین حالا از هر رای ممکنه که است امو رو ثابت بسازیم که امزا دروغ است راست است چی رقم است ولی تا جایی که من میگم خیلی امزا درست است برزی که خودش دروبری میره امزا
She calls for the document she claims was given to her by Mullah Omar and written to President Karzai. <laughs> I'm left wondering if the letter could ever be legitimate or if she has any credibility. If nothing else, her claims reflect how surreal Kabul has become. The killing of Baranuddin Rabani marks a turning point for this battered nation. Talking peace with terrorists has taken the country even closer to the edge. After what's happened here in the last decade, it's really hard to see how things are going to change for the better. 